Hello, class 11 students of psychology. Your chapter 5 on sensation, attention and perception. This is part 2 of this chapter, which is the visual and auditory sensations. In the previous part, we saw what are the different properties of stimuli that make us sense them and which are the different sense organs in the human body that help us make the receptors acceptable. In this part, we shall talk of two of these sense organs in detail. The first one being the visual sensation. Here, we'll cover the human eye, the working of the eye, its structure and special processes like adaptation, color vision, after images. Next, we'll cover the auditory sensation, the human ear, its structure and working and the nature of sound as a stimulus, loudness, pitch, timbre. Let us begin with visual sensation. Undoubtedly, vision is the most highly developed sense in the human beings, responsible for almost 80% of the reception that we do from our environment. Visual sensation starts when light enters the eyes and stimulates our visual receptors. The eyes are sensitive to a certain spectrum of light ranging from 380 to 780 nanometers, a nanometer being one millionth of a meter. Here you can see the structure of a human eye. Let us discuss it. The human eye broadly is divided into three parts. The outer layer constitutes of a transparent cornea and a tough sclera which protects and maintains the shape of the eye. The middle layer is the colorant, which is richly supplied with blood vessels. The innermost layer being that of the retina, which constitutes of photoreceptors and an elaborate network of interconnected neurons. The eye is very often equated to a camera. Two common things being the lens and the regulation of the amount of light entering the eye. The lens of a human eye divides it into two unequal parts. The first being the aqueous chamber. This is between the cornea and the lens. It is smaller in size and is filled with a water-like substance known as the aqueous humor. The second part is the vitreous chamber. It lies between the lens and the retina and is filled with a jelly-like protein called the vitreous humor. These fluids are responsible for holding the lens in its place and shape. They also allow flexibility for accommodation. Now, what is accommodation? Accommodation is the process through which the lens changes its shape to focus on objects at varying distances. It is regulated by the ciliary muscles which are attached to the eye lens. The muscles help the lens to flatten when it has to focus on distant objects and they help it to thicken up when the focus has to be given to nearby objects. There is another mechanism in our eye which is similar to that of a camera. It is the mechanism to control the amount of light that enters our eye. This is done with the help of the iris. An iris is a disc-like colored membrane which lies between the cornea and the lens. It is regulated by pupil dilation. When you go in the dim light and your eyes need to read or see more in that small amount of light, then your pupil dilates or expands. On the contrary, when you are in a very bright light, lesser amount of light needs to enter the eye for you to have a proper vision. Here, the pupil gets contracted or it becomes smaller. The iris does this. Now let us come to the innermost layer of the eye which we called the retina. Retina is composed of five types of cells. The most prominent one being the rods and the cones. These are photosensitive cells. 
a human eye has approximately 10 million rods. These are receptors for scotopic vision or the night vision. They operate at very low intensity of light and lead to an achromatic or colorless vision. On the contrary, there are cones which are responsible for photopic vision or day vision. They operate at high levels of illumination and lead to chromatic or color vision. We humans have approximately 7 million cones in our eyes. Besides these, the retina has highly concentrated regions. There is a yellow spot in the retina. The cones are highly concentrated in a central region of the retina as you can see in the diagram of the eye. These are surrounding the fovea. A fovea is a very small circular region which is size of a pea. This is the region of maximum visual equity because of the maximum number of concentrated cones around this region. Besides the photoreceptors and other cells, the retina has a very complex network of neurons. These are forming the optic nerve. It contains a bundle of exons of a cell which is known as the ganglion cell that form the optic nerve which leads to the brain. This nerve is responsible for taking the images that you sense to the brain and making sense out of them. There is a blind spot here. This is the spot where the optic nerve leaves the retina from the area that has no photoreceptors. In this area, the photosensitivity is completely absent and therefore it is known as a blind spot. Now let us see how the human eye works. How does it make you see things? You understand the basic structure of the eye. So, how do we see? The light which passes through conjectiva, the cornea and the pupil enters the lens. This lens focuses it on the retina. The retina is divided into two parts, the nasal half and the temporal half. The nasal half is the half of the eye which starts from the nose towards the middle of the fovea and the temporal half is the half that starts from the temple of the forehead till the fovea. Now the light coming from the right stimulates the left part of both the eyes. That means the light coming from the right stimulates the nasal half of the right eye and the temporal half of the left eye. Similarly, the light coming from the left stimulates the right part of both the eyes. That is the nasal half of the left eye and the temporal half of the right eye. Now, this helps you make certain images. These images are inverted and the object is formed on the retina. The neural impulse then transmits it to the visual cortex with the help of the optic nerve where the image is again inverted and you are able to process it. So students, do you see the different parts of the eye? How interestingly they collaborate with one another to make you see and make sense of what you see. There are certain unique processes that your eyes go through to help you have a better vision. The first of these is the process of adaptation. Adaptation is getting adjusted to different intensities of light. If you go to a cinema hall, you might have noticed that when you enter, the hall is all dark and you are not able to see anything. But after you have spent some 20-25 minutes over there, you are able to see things even in that darkness. This is known as the dark adaptation. And when you come out of the cinema hall, Immediately you feel a little blinded but within 1-2 minutes your light adaptation happens and the eyes are able to see like a normal situation. This is light adaptation. Now the dark adaptation takes 20-30 minutes. However, the light adaptation occurs very quickly. How is it possible? This is done through a chemical process. The rods have a photosensitive chemical substance which is known as rhodopsin or a visual purple. The molecules of the substance get bleached in bright light. So you are able to see in the light. In dark, with the help of vitamin A, the rhodopsin is regenerated 
and reconstructed. So you are able to see in the dark. But the regeneration is a longer process, therefore the dark adaptation is longer than light adaptation. Now we said that this occurs with vitamin A. Therefore, people who have deficiency of vitamin A are not able to regenerate the chemical rhodopsin in dark. Hence, they suffer from night blindness. They are not able to see in the dark. Therefore, it is very important to have vitamin A to help you keep proper vision in dark and the night. The second specialized process that occurs through your eyes is the color vision. Now, sensation of color is a psychological process. It happens in your brain and not through your eye. It is created when the brain interprets the quality of certain substances. A sunlight is a perfect mixture of all seven colors. Normally, a person with a normal color vision can see seven million shades. There are different dimensions of color. The first one being hue. Hue is a name that you give to a color. It is measured in wavelengths. Different colors have different wavelengths. For example, blue has a wavelength of 465 nanometers. Another feature that helps you detect different colors is its saturation. This means the relative amount of hue on a surface, whether it is dark or light. Then is brightness which is the perceived intensity of light in a color. There are different color mixtures that happen. We have three primary colors which are red, blue and green. They are called primary colors because they can result into all the other colors by being mixed in different proportions. There are certain complementary colors which when mixed together result in achromatic shades like gray or white. Examples of complementary colors are red and green and blue and yellow. Different mixtures and different proportions of complementary colors result in different achromatic shades. Another specialized process in vision is after images. After images? Well, let's define them. These are effect of a visual stimulus which persists for some time even after removal of the object from the visual field. So when you are looking at something and the thing stops existing in your visual field, you still are able to imagine or see that thing. This is after image. There are of two types, positive after images. This, this is the effect of a stimulus even after it ceases to exist in your visual field. So when you are looking at something and the thing goes away, you close your eyes immediately you are able to see the same thing even with closed eyes. This is known as positive after image where the saturation hue and the color remains the same. However, if you look at something with great intensity for a long time and suddenly shift your vision to a neutral background, you will be able to see negative after images. Here the colors become complementary. If you were looking at a blue thing, at the neutral background you see a red similar thing. These are positive and negative after images. Friends, after discussing the interesting visual sensation, let us come to the auditory sensation. Audition is a very important sense for human beings. It is responsible for all your spoken communication. It also is responsible for orienting us towards objects and giving us reliable spatial information. This occurs when the sound enters our ear and stimulates the chief organs of hearing. What you can see on your screens is a structure of a human ear. The human ear is divided into external, middle and inner ear. Let us deal with each of them. External ear constitutes of a pinna which is a funnel shaped thing which collects the sound waves from the surroundings. It also has auditory meters, which is the canal protected by wax and hair. It carries sound waves from pinna to tympanum or the eardrum. The tympanum is located in the middle ear. This is a thin membrane which is highly sensitive to sound vibrations. There is a tympanic cavity 
which is correlated to the pharynx with the help of the eutestian tube which maintains the air pressure in the tympanic cavity. From this cavity vibrations pass to the three ossicles that increase the vibrations almost 10 times and send them to the inner ear. The three ossicles are named hammer, anvil and stirrup also called the malleus, incus and stapes respectively. Then you have an inner ear which is a very complicated structure known as the membranous labyrinth. It is encapsulated in a bony shell called the bony labyrinth. It has a life-like fluid which is found in the space. The bony labyrinth has semicircular canals at right angles to each other. They have fine hair cells and are highly sensitive to postural changes and changes in body orientation. It has a vestibule which is a cavity and cochlea which is a coiled structure. Inside the bony cochlea there is a membranous cochlea which is known as scala medulla. It is filled with endolymph, has a specially coiled membrane which is bacillar membrane. The fine hair and cells are arranged to form the organ of corti which is the main organ of hearing. So you see this main organ of hearing corti is located in the innermost parts of your inner ear. How does a human ear work now? You would have understood it by looking at the structure itself. Let's have a quick recap of it. The pinna collects the sound vibrations. It serves them to the tympanum through the auditory meters. From the tympanic cavity, the vibrations are transmitted to the three ossicles. The ossicles increase their strength and transmit them to the inner ear. In the inner ear, the cochlea receives the sound waves. Through vibrations, endolymph is set to motion, which also vibrates the organ of corti. Finally, the impulses are sent to the auditory nerve which has a base from the cochlea and runs to the auditory cortex in the brain where it is interpreted. So from vibrating your outer pinna to the inner corti, the sound waves create the magic of hearing. This means we must understand sound as a stimulus in terms of waves. What is sound actually? It results from the pressure variations in external environment. Any physical movement that disturbs the surrounding medium that is air and pushes the air molecules back and forth is a wave. The travel in form of waves that strike our ears. A set of mechanical processes is initiated that helps us listen. The sound waves vary in their amplitude and in their frequency. The amplitude is basically the difference from the mean to the crest or a trough. The length between two consecutive crests or two consecutive troughs is the wavelength. The waves also have a frequency. Frequency is cycles of a wave per second. Wavelength and frequency are inversely correlated. More the wavelength, less the frequency and less the wavelength, more the frequency. Now that you understand stimulus of a sound in terms of waves, you must also know the psychological dimensions of sound. Waves are the physical dimensions. Psychologically, sound is not only sound. It is differentiated by different qualities of loudness, pitch and timbre. Loudness is determined by amplitude of the waves and is measured in decibels. A human ear can decipher 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz of loudness. Pitch is the highness or lowness of sound. The Indian rhythmic notes Sa Re Ga Ma Pa start from the low pitch to the higher pitch of the sound. Then is the timbre which is the nature or quality of sound. When you say this is a very shrill sound or this is a very sweet and soothing sound, you are talking of timbre. Friends, now you know what are visual and auditory stimuli and how they are made sense of by our eye and ear. These are complex sense organs which structure you now know. 
I hope after listening to this, you will be able to more understand and appreciate these wonderful sense organs that you have as gifts being humans. Thank you. Thank you.